Hey guys, so this company Wheelock uh, did reach out to me and asked if I wanted to try their smart door lock. And this is a door lock which replaces the stock lock in your door. Um, it, and it's not like some systems where you uh, just plug a key in and there's some apparatus from the inside which will rotate the key um, then via some Bluetooth connection or so. This one will be just really installed in your door instead of your original lock. And then from the inside it can always be rotated, but from the outside it only works when it's unlocked. And this unlocking can happen either via the keypad, via RFID, like with these tags, or via Bluetooth and an app. So I did looked a bit around already and it for once seemed that the Bluetooth connection is encrypted. How good it is encrypted, I haven't looked any deeper until now. But we will also take a look inside and see what really makes it tick. In general, you could decide on your own if you ever want to buy something like that or not. It's clear that it is not as safe as a stock lock because you have way bigger um, an exploit area, I would call it, and such. So this is not about the security. If you install one of them, you know what you do. And I um, received it quite fast. It was shipped or fulfilled by Amazon. And I will put a link down in the description. It is not so cheap, but you should decide on your own. I will just link it without any affiliate link or such. And yeah, I will show you how to install it in a door. It's really quite simple and these are my own opinions, I have to say. But after that, we take a look inside and see what's inside to understand the system a bit better. It's quite interesting what hardware they use. So here's how we install this uh, V-Lock uh, Bluetooth NFC pin smart lock. And basically what we want to do is uh, remove this one uh, big screw here which holds the original lock inside. And you have to put the key in, rotate it a bit to get your normal lock out. As otherwise here the um, yeah, rotation thing will hold um, inside of the lock. So after we pulled it out we can uh, yeah, basically directly put the smart lock in. We do have to remove this side of it first and they do supply this Allen, Allen key which we can put here in, unscrew it a, it a bit and just uh, yeah, take it right off. After that we have the lock and here also we need to um, make or rotate this hook thing so we can just put it inside of the lock and we can then already turn a bit the inner part to find the correct area where we then can screw in the, the old screw again with any luck yeah that fits already and they uh, do supply a screwdriver but i'm using my own as it's yeah nicer to to screw in so we can tighten the lock uh, or the screw so it's not wiggling much around inside and then we can already put the inner part back on and yeah just Screw the Allen key, the yeah, screw in, and that's basically it already. So on mine, I had this extra shielding part which I had to remove. It was uh, installed like this, 
so I need to, to remove it to get to this screw but then it worked out we can now insert the batteries from this side if we uh, unscrew that screw we can uh, pull the um, yeah uh, metal part away and then flap open this part to get the battery out or in to then now unlock it we can just yeah enter the passcode and either unlock or lock it however you want after a while it will um, remove this locking again as you can see now but from the inside we can always lock and unlock so yeah that's basically it let's now take a look inside of the lock so uh, let's take a look inside and do a full tear down you do need an allen wrench and also a screwdriver to open it up i have to mention that it's not simple to open it up without the lock not being installed so that's quite a good thing so everything i show here which does not use any excess force is only possible after you are already uh, got the lock in your hands so in terms of security wise but of course you can always just break it up here or whatever to do to really just open it forcefully to begin with I will open up the battery apartment by unscrewing this screw and then we can Pull it out to the side and we can also again see the batteries but now we have for once here this metal uh, rod and we need to get it out as this is holding the main um, system inside and we can do so by pulling it with this LM wrench it's not that simple but doable and yeah I will show it open in a moment the next thing is we need to get away this top part and to do so we can just get under this uh, corner sides and then we can open it up the next thing is here on this side there was some small metal pin which was uh, holding again the inside in position I did cut away this small part or piece to uh, get it out to the side later because here we have four screws we need to remove and that way we can after this is um, away as well pull the uh, case away from the lock and I will show it here so we have this top part which comes away or goes away like this and again this thing could be opened um, without the lock being not installed but we do not have much access to anything so it's really just the PCB here which is um, there for entering the pin and there's another PCB under it where the the controller part is so it's not you useful for any intruder to get here that far I mean it's mostly plastic so it's still again you have to decide it okay so if we have removed this pin or did cut out the part there and remove the screws and also this metal rod we can pull it aside a bit but quite far, uh, early we see that there is even more inside so more cables and these cables do hold this thing quite tightly together so we can unplug this connector here and after that we will pull a bit harder to get the internal metal part 
the aluminium part out, which was held here by the rod and by the pin. But at the same time, we need to see that we can get all the cable parts out. So we have this charger plug here, which can be removed to the outside and then stuffed through the hole here. And then we can pull the complete thing apart and have for once the main PCB here and also the controller PCB and the connection to the lock. You see I have soldered uh, a few wires here and the reason is, I will try to show a picture now, uh, the reason is there is a Nordic NRF chip on the main PCB, it's an NRF5182802. It's the low cost variant of the NRF51. Then there's also the RFID chip, which is a WS1850S. And also an RTC uh, chip is included here. But for some reason, this RTC chip has no battery. And in general, the NRF should have also an RTC included. So I'm not sure why they did it. Uh, we have, of course, then here the OLED screen, a few buttons and a few LEDs and a beeper. And that's basically it on the hardware side. Since uh, the NRF chip was locked, I had to write a short script to dump the flash of the it and it worked quite well. So I was able to extract the firmware from it, but have not looked much, much deeper into it on how secure really the connection is. And if there is, for example, some master RFID chip, which would work on any lock or so, that's an interesting part to look at, but it's also very time consuming, so I will not spend too much time onto it. Yes, yeah. For for anyone to help, you first need to get the lock at all. So yeah. And one thing to do would of course be to write a custom firmware for the whole system and then make it more secure or add some features, etc. If yeah, but then again, it's some very time consuming part for maybe a few people who buy the lock as well. So yeah, it's not really that deep of an interest, but nice to see how it works inside. What is quite interesting is that it seems like the lock mechanism here, which is connected via these three wires, is somehow encoded with each other or encrypted with each other. Because if I um, flash another firmware onto this chip, it will not uh, recognize the lock mechanism inside, which is quite good because that means you cannot just plug another um, power source into the lock cable and it will open up. So that's quite a neat secure feature and yeah. Okay, that's basically it already for this V-Lock Smart Lock. Uh, I hope you found it quite interesting, or a bit at least, and check them out or check this lock out. They also have other variants, and yeah, if you want to install something like that, make sure to choose the correct one and that you know what you are doing. And I find or found it quite interesting that they used the Nordic NRF 51802 and not the 51822 because the one they used is uh, mostly advised to be used in very cheap products uh, like disposable products. And the reason is because that one does draw a bit more power on Bluetooth connection and has a bit less um, a reception bluetooth wise so maybe this is because of chip shortages or they just wanted to spare another cent